If YouTube playlists are not your thing, you can find this course and more at poll.unfgames.com. It's easier to follow along and know where you left off. Now, let's start the video. Let's talk about the third way of controlling the execution time. The third way is through timelines. A timeline, let's create one right now. You, to create it, we just right click and type timeline. Here in timeline, you can give it a name. I will use it in this example for a little animation of my respawning um, pickup, right? So let's call it respawn animation. And this respawn animation, uh, it, it's better if you put a prefix like a T from for timeline. This timeline contains information that that has values uh, determined by us inside a, a well a timeline. If you double click it, then we will see the timeline. We do not have any information, but we can create tracks in it. We can have a flow track if we wanted just a value. You can right click and add a key, or you can control click, excuse me, shift click to add more keys. And you can have a curve here, and this curve you can make, you can change the the tangents, linear, automatic tangents. You can move them. You can really get creative with all of this. The same as a float. There is a vector, but now you are playing with with three values. At key to all curves. If we need, here are the three values. We can create events. So whenever this get gets to this precise point, then an event triggers. And every track will be controlled by the timeline. Here we can set up the length of the timeline. Usually you want it to set up at one, one second, so then we can change the play rate and get easier animations for faster or slower. So usually you want the length to be one. You can use the last keyframe, autoplay, loop, replicate it. Uh, this will be useful if you want to show behavior that your timeline have in a multiplayer game. And you can ignore the time dilation here. The time dilation will make our game run slower, but if you, you ignore it, then this timeline will ignore it. So let's do something with it. Let's not just talk about it. Ah, and this, the last one is color. You can change like different colors, colors here. If you wanted a gradient, you can drive a lot of stuff, material colors with a timeline also. If you want to change something in runtime, it can be a good, a good way to do it. So let's right click on everything and delete it. And what I want to do with this timeline is create a little animation because the timeline lets us have values inside a frame of time, then it is easy to do uh, some little animation. For example, I want that when my pickup respawns, I want the the coin to go upwards and rotate. Uh, so seems pretty simple, right? So let's do it. The respawn pickup. Here we are toggling the the visibility and collision. And I also want to play this timeline. This timeline we set it up with a length of one, and this length will determine how long it plays for. This track, let's, let's call it uh, C movement. And I'm not using a vector because I only want to move my, my little coin in the C. Now, right now, if I go to my viewport, and let's close these functions just to make it easier. My animation, what I want to do here is change the C location right now is in 60. So that that's the, the final location I want to achieve. I want it to come from the bottom from zero and go upwards right to 60. So that's, that's what I can do here at first at zero. I want it to be zero, then time zero and value zero. And at one that it will be the last um, execution of, of my timeline, then I can choose time one and the value should be 60. 
So now let's save it. Let's go back to the event graph. And here, now that I added a track in my timeline, I have this new value that will be driven by the animation, well, by the execution of this timeline. And if you are missing your other point, then you can adjust the view or the curve to fit. Then how can I use this value? Well, whenever we run a timeline, we will have an update execution pin that will run every frame, a finish execution, fi uh, execution pin whenever the timeline finishes, right? That this one is one second in, le in length. So after one second, it will show finish. And the direction will tell us uh, if we were going backwards or forwards. Let's yes, equal enum, forward, backward. And why do we have this? Because if we, if we wanted a opposite animation, usually it's done when you are opening doors. You only want to do animation one, the rotating animation once. And then whenever we close the door, we can reverse the timeline. We can call the reverse node and it will run from the current point to the, um, to the end. Well, to the start in this case. And we will talk about this, all, all these input nodes in a minute. But let's first use this C movement. We wanted to move this static mesh. So let's grab the component and set the relative location. And we have talked already about relative and world locations, well, coordinates. In our case, this blueprint houses this component. This component has a 60 of relative location, so it doesn't matter where it is in the world. So with this, now I can connect my C movement. I do not need a vector here. Let me split it, right click it, split, and let's connect the C movement. Let's press play. And whenever I will call the respawn, let's do it here. Oh, uh, my, yeah, my, my pickups are too, too near to each other. They should call my respawn animation. There it is. That's my respawn animation. Now, it doesn't play the second time because once it finished playing, it will get stuck here at the one. If we want it to be an animation that can be replayed, then we need to use play from a start. We can also stop mid animation. We can reverse it. We can reverse from the end. Or set a new time but I usually don't don't use this set new time because if we wanted to make the animation faster we only needed to set up the play rate how do we set up the play rate whenever we create a timeline we will have it here on the components and we can drag and drop it let's get it and we can set playback and excuse me is play rate and the play rate will determine how fast it will go if it's one, it's normal time. It's it. If it's less than one, then for example, if it's uh, 0 0.5, it will be twice as slow. But if it's two, it should be twice as fast. If it's zero, it won't play at all. Then let's press play. And where I, I already pick it up. And the animation should be faster. If we, if we want a faster animation, then we can, I don't know, maybe seven should be faster and there it is a lot faster if i wanted to rotate it then we can um, we could change like this rotation like this and save the value and all that a faster way to do it because we're already updating a a, a location here we really don't do not need another track we could create it you are free to do, do so, but, but in our case, we can add a relative rotation and I can choose the axis. Let's, let's check what, what axis do I need. It seems to be my role, which is my X. Then I can connect it like this in X. Let's add, I don't know, two. It may be too much. Let's see. Play. And let, let me let me change the play rate to something I will be able to see. 
and again they should also be a variable and let's open it open the eye so set the play rate let's see if it's working this add rotation maybe two is too too little and that that sound is really is starting to get to me but there it is the two work so maybe it's too too little now play and i'm sorry for the current explosion so that's that's cool right but yeah let's let's use um uh another curve because it it, it will be cool let's call it uh, roll rotation and let's call it new and let's let's rename it and also call it new c location so it's easier to understand whenever we come back to the code here at first i want um what what could be a good effect from going um from a high value to a low value maybe yeah let's let's try that let's call it 50 and then at the end let's put it at zero oh one yeah there it is and now we can add this value new rotation let's use it here split it let's connect it to the roll and there it is play and now yeah pretty cool right but what would happen if i needed to change for example i wanted more rotation at the start i could go here and change the value right let's call it i don't know uh, 100 and it's all good because um, we are using like few values and yeah that's that's pretty cool and the thing about that is that it can get really complicated if i had more values like like this or uh, even cooler effects i could select all my all my curves all my points and here right click auto just to get some nice looking tangents let's say that i am not good with one of those values right if i if i need to to make the change here like no maybe 100 it's is too much i will run into the problem that yeah okay let's have it let's divide by two then go again here and divide by two and it's really a hassle so we will use the same logic of why we had the length on one we will change all our values to be inside one or minus one for example here the value is 60 let's put it to one and now here in the event graph because i know the highest value will be one this new c location we will multiply it multiply it there it is by our highest value that was 60. now i can create this um, as a variable and i will call it um, what can i call it let's call it timeline no um starting c location because that's what it is right yeah and the same one for here this way every value will be on one and we really just need to worry about the shape of the curve and not the values and it will it will re really be faster to change so let's also change this one here this will be one this will be this was already zero and now we can focus on our curves and here in the event graph we can focus on our values so that's a, a little a little better and it's easier because it's easier to customize because now i can promote this to a variable and let's call it highest rotation oh, value respond and it, it's it's usually a good idea to call our variables something that is easily understandable in this case these variables are being used for the respawn so respawn and in starting c location sounds good or maybe it could be 
it would be, not be the starting one, it would be the goal. And respawn highest rotation value. That sounds, sounds good. And we can play around with a lot of numbers here, maybe 200. And I do not have to change the curve, which was a disadvantage at first. Yeah, pretty nice. With this, you just need to know that you can also pause without having to use these, these input nodes. You can get the component, get, you can pause. Oh, well, it's called a stop then. Yeah, a stop. And change a lot of behavior that your current um, timeline could have. You can also play it, play from the start, play. You don't really have to use these nodes in order to have a, a working timeline. And if you wanted, wanted it to, st to play from the start, then you can auto play. And then whenever I hit play, then if you, see the, if you saw the, the shadows, then oh, let me put back here. No, that's not it. You can see that my timeline auto plays which is pretty, pretty nice.